Welcome back to the Empathy Dojo. Oh, got to get my timer here. Make sure we stay on coffee time. Uh, welcome back to the Empathy Dojo week two class lesson number five. Wow, we're already on five because I makes my math easy because we're doing the Rev C protocol rapport, but we did two of those emotions, values, and now choosing responsibly, choosing responsibly. So this is a very exciting and very important lesson. Let's get right to it. I'm going to even follow my notes instead of just riffing uh, because of how important I feel this is. So choosing, um, as I've let you know, this Rev C protocol is kind of like my personal development on to the protocol I've used for like 25 years now, which is the OFNR from nonviolent communication. Those of you who are in this whole long course, you'll learn that as well uh, because it's such a great model, but I've slightly tweaked the places where I found myself get stuck in communication and self-talk and talk with others, as well as I've seen in coaching. People, people tend to kind of, it's easy to manipulate some of these. Um, and so just using new language, developing things, innovating. So in that process, O, observation, N, no, O, F, feelings, N, needs, R, requests. So this is great if you need to mediate a relational difficulty, right? This process goes something like, when you came home last night, you slammed the door. I felt anxious. Uh, because it triggered some old trauma and I was feeling anxious and scared. I need peace in my house. There's the need. And then finally, you would ask, would you be willing to be extra mindful about how loudly you close the door, right? And so what's cool about that is that um, there's no blame in there. There's, it gets rid of projections and stories. We'll go all into this in the, in the program, but instead of what sometimes we'll do is, is, you know, we get triggered, we get anxious and we go right into you slam the door because you're angry or you're violent or you're unconscious or whatever. No. Okay. What's the observation? Oh yeah. The door slammed loudly last night and it's rapport. Cause we can both actually agree that that happened. Okay, what did I feel? And it's totally referential. It's not, I felt that you, it's I felt emotion. Um, so what was my emotion? It was anxiety and fear. Um, what was I needing? Well, I was needing a sense of safety, right? Um, and then you would make a request from that place. And it's just a really great, it's a really just great model for getting a lot of the gunk that makes uh, challenging conversations so challenging. So but in this, I really wanted to, in the Rev C protocol, so my hope is transcend and include the NVC protocol, the OFNR that I've been just telling you about, it, not to throw that away, that works just great, but it doesn't always work for if you're not in a crucial conversation, like what if you uh, will learn next week uh, the praise protocol, um, how to give a compassionate compliment. So uh, just for a fun little game and in there, like there's no request at the end of that. It's just like, this was awesome. I love that. And so um, how, do you, how do you work with this model? Well, choice is something that's always taking place. It's always gonna be relevant in our interactions in ourself and in our interactions with others. So this last, this letter C is choose, choosing responsibly. Okay, let's get right into it. So first thing to know is that there are few things in life that you actually have to do. We've got a language that I, I don't think this is that uncommon. You should probably relate with this pretty easily that we say, oh, I have to, what do you got to do today? Oh, I've got to go to work. Well, then what do you got to do? Well, I got to pay my taxes. Well, then what? Well, then I have to pick up the kids and there's nothing wrong. We're not policing conventional speech. Don't say have to, but you may notice that the usage of have to is inherently disempowering. It's inherently disempowering. And you don't notice this unless it becomes a problem. Um, when we use this on each other, it does become a problem quite quickly, right? You have to do this. Well, if I imagine if I told any of you course participants that, uh, it would immediately strain our relationship if, if I went have to, right? Because it's in this should, shouldn't, good, bad um, dichotomy that, that doesn't 
promote real relating. So this is this is a challenge with have to. We'll unpack that more as we go. Um, so there are only a couple things that you actually have to do, such as like breathing, for example, is kind of a have to, because if you hold your breath for long enough, your brain will knock you out and then breathe for you, right? So you kind of have to do that. Now, content warning, serious issues ahead. Um, you could find a way to stop breathing, right? You could, you could arrange that for yourself and then stop the process of taking more breaths in and stop living, right? So you don't actually even have to breathe. So all the way down to that is a choice. Breathing is a choice and going to work is a choice and taking this course is a choice. All of these are choices. And when we start to think of them in that way, it becomes a much more empowering way of working in our own lives. And what we want is this empowerment. We're working, at least in this first course, especially with contacting living energies. So have to is not a living energy. That's an old dead judgment. This is what has to be done. This is what doesn't have to be done. These are the things one should do. These are... No, we're going for living energies. What do you choose to do? And we're choosing from our values, which is what we dipped our toes into yesterday. So the only thing I'm going to propose to you today, the only thing you actually have to do in life is choose. You have to choose. Now, of course, life will uh, bring you all sorts of circumstances, right? You don't get to choose the circumstances of your life. You can influence them, obviously. This is old news to you, I'm sure, but you don't get to choose them. But what you do have to choose, you don't really have any choice about this one thing, is whether you open or close, whether you keep going or quit. Th these are kind of the fundamental choices and you have to make them. You have to make these choices. Um, I'd be interested, maybe there's some debate about that. Put it in the comments. I'm not, I'm not firm on this, uh, but this is what I've come up with. So if you've got a debate, write that in the comments. I believe that the only thing we have to do is choose whether to open, to open or close in, or in any moment and to keep going or quit in any moment. That's the only thing we have to do. You don't ever really get around that. So knowing that, the first task for your cognitive filter today, I'm going to give you probably two of these in, in this lesson. So as you go throughout the day, your cognitive filter, your task in your self-inquiry, so I'd like you to look at it is where do you say have to? Is this a thing? And so um, maybe you're not aware, maybe you don't feel like you say have to all that much or something. So put on that cognitive filter and see during your day, if that comes up, if you go, oh, I have to do this, or I have to do that. And we're going to attempt first just to notice. So if all you can do today is notice, that's great. If you're ready to go to the next level, which takes some time sometimes, then we're going to play with anywhere we say, I have to, just change your inner language to, I choose to. And we're gonna work with, I choose to because. I choose to because, and the because is going to be a trick to get us deeper into the expression of those core values that we introduced last time. So tomorrow, moderately early in the day, not terribly early, but tomorrow I'm going to go to a title office for underwriting some title stuff. And then I also have to do a different task for the DMV. And, um, oh, I said, I have to, don't I? Um, so what I, so there's this little habit in there, right? When I'm going to do paperwork of some kind or like deal with bureaucracy or something like that, that does feel like a have to in there just from the way the habits of my mind work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to, why, why, why would you go? Like, I don't actually have to, I could stay home. And this is what's going to be the end of our lesson today uh, in a couple of minutes, but there are consequences to that. Right there, I, I could not go to that thing, but then the reason that I was going to do that doesn't come about. So if, if you're like, yeah, but I have to go to work. Well, no, you don't. You just have, you do have to accept the consequences. That's, that's one thing. So that's keep going or quit open or close, you know, but those, those consequences are going to come that one. You don't get any choice about, but you get choice about the whole, the whole darn thing, right? You don't. Okay. This one's weird. Take this with a grain of salt, salt right? You don't have to pick up the kids. Now, come on, what, like, 
you you do have to we use that for strength but like the consequences of that are unthinkable that's what we mean to imply by have to so you don't have to change but please don't change the language on that i might go back and edit that out it's so weird like don't even think about that um but the whole thing is to actually start to think in terms of consequences and when if you're driving in the suv and you're like ah damn it i gotta go pick up the kids just instead of i got to start to change the language. I'm choosing to go pick up the kids. As weird as that is, I know I'm gonna think about this, but I'm choosing to go pick up the kids because, and the because that part is not weird at all because I love the kids. Because I'm choosing to go and, and get them on time. Not, I have to get there by then. I'm choosing to get there five minutes early because I want my kids to feel a sense of safety and security, right? Um, whatever it is that your values, and then what happens is it's really weird. You know, you're doing these chores and all of a sudden, all of this energy is arising in your system. You're like, yeah, I'm going to get the kids. I'm going to be there five minutes early. This is great. This is the empowerment that happens from changing have to, to choose to. So you don't have to go to work. You do have to go get the kids. Good. Now I don't have to edit this. This is coming around. You do have to go get the kids, mister. But if you use your language of I choose to because and you work with those core values, then all of a sudden you have access to a whole different kinds of power. Have to's tend to shut us down because you're not the chooser. You're not the agent of those. You're a, you're a victim of the things that you have to do. And you're just kind of like following along passively. Become the agent as the expression of your values. Woo, it makes me excited. So tomorrow I'm gonna go and like do bureaucratic stuff because I value certain things about my future. I actually have, I actually value creating my future. I, I value being a responsible citizen. I value aspects of my relationship with my partner that this is contributing to. So uh, all of these things. And, and then, wow, okay, yeah, I'll, I can get myself over there. This will be great. So this is immediately empowerment. Now in the interpersonal, so that's frame one, just all day long, cognitive filter, look for it. Does your brain say have to or gotta or should? Those are the big three, have to, got to, or should. And start to switch that to, I choose to because, and then fill in the value that you are fulfilling. Is it a value for beauty? Is it a value for safety? Is it a value for connection? Excuse me. Okay. Then the uh, second aspect of this is in the interpersonal, in the interpersonal. So one way, uh, yesterday's lesson was on values. And then in the NVC model, they call that needs. Well, one way you can tell if you're not expressing universal human need is you're, you'll say, I need you to. So rather than saying, like in my example, I need safety or I need autonomy or I need connection, you would say, I need you to take out the garbage. Okay, um, I need you to shut up, whatever it is that we afflict each other with. And hopefully that made you as comfortable, uncomfortable just now as it made me. The I need you, if we get ourselves attuned to this idea of choosing is actually, it's starting to disempower the person's choice. It's putting them into the role of have to. So we wanna play with our language to invite the person to choose to participate in the expression of our values. So this is where it comes down to requests and we'll do a lot of that next month. But it, it's for me that the light bulb moment of this with, as I worked with my NVC techniques is that what makes it a request is that we are asking a person to choose or we're empowering them to choose to participate in our value expression. That's the difference between a demand, between shame and manipulation tactics is when we say, would you be willing to, could you please, it would help me if, then instead of saying, I need you to, you have to do this or else, we're actually empowering them to choose. And so think about if you got that sense in our first little frame, you know, of how different it is to say I have to versus I choose because in our interpersonal interactions, if someone agrees to do a thing because they felt slightly manipulated or shamed or guilty or something like that, that's totally different than if they agree to do a thing because they want to participate in expressing your values which are now their shared values. You know, they're choosing because, because 
some value of theirs is being met. They love you. They want you to thrive or they too want harmony. And so even though this isn't how they would want to do it, they'll do it to create harmony, all of these things. Then we're contacting these living energies. And what we want to do is invite people to choose with us in ways that empower them because like, what's more fun than that? Going around both of us empowered. Okay. So your second frame, if you want is to just be honest, not I need you to take out the garbage because you don't, you won't die if they don't take out the garbage. You want them to take out the garbage. And so because you value cleanliness, because you value good odors in the household, because you value teamwork, we can say, would you please take out the, gar the garbage? Because it's expressing these values that I love of cleanliness. Do you want to participate in that? Let's do it together. Oh. Okay, the last one. So would you please, would you be willing? Um, and then sometimes even it would help me with. This is immediately more honest. And instead of giving the person a fool's choice of fulfill my needs or pay the price or my happiness is all in your hands. What? No, we're actually inviting them. I'm an agent in my happiness. I'm choosing responsibly. You're an agent in your happiness, but you could also take part in mine. We could participate in creating happiness together. Would you like to? And we're inviting this choiceful, agentic uh, relationship where we're all actually contributing from our depths. Okay, finally, just to circle back around, it's choosing responsibly. We understand that our choices have consequences. This allows us not to make choices lightly. We choose based on how it expresses our values and what we know will come about. And this helps us to take accountability. The last problem with have to, because we're in overtime, is that have to actually allows us to slough off our own accountability and our responsibility. The responsibility. You say, why'd you do that? Well, I had to. Okay. It's totally different. Why'd you do that? Well, I chose to because it's a much more responsible statement. We're not always able to choose deeply. We're, we're definitely not in charge of all the circumstances of our lives. But if we emphasize choice, we're tapping into a source of empowerment for ourselves and others. So this is your mission today. Should you choose to accept it is, you don't have to accept it. If you choose to accept it, just look at your frame. When are you saying have to, gotta to yourself or others and start to shift that language into choice Come back tomorrow and we're going to do a practice. Now we've got all these building blocks. We're going to weave these building blocks into a practice. And then all next week, we'll be practicing these with self and other. So I'll see you then.